There are some updates coming to After Effects that I'm especially excited about, and you can get a preview of them right now by installing the beta version of After Effects. So probably the most obvious change that you're gonna see is the UI refresh, which if I just switch over to the beta version, you can see that it is now just a little bit more slick. It's a little darker, the button highlights are different. Actually, every single pixel of the user interface has been completely updated to be more consistent with the rest of Adobe's products. This is called the Adobe Spectrum Design Style, and this is not the only version of this style. If we go into the preferences, let's go into edit, preferences, appearance. There are three different color themes that you can choose from. I'm currently on darkest, but we can switch this over to dark, which is very similar to what we already have in After Effects, what I have my current version set to. And there's also light, which you might need some sunglasses for. It's just awful. I do not want to ever see this again. It reminds me of the first time I used After Effects. I don't know why anyone would want to work in a light theme, but hey, it's there, it's retro, I guess. I'm gonna go back to darkest, and the other new update to the color style is this reduced contrast checkbox. If I uncheck it, you're gonna see that the text gets a little bit lighter, some of the highlights, things change. I don't really like the high contrast look myself. It's a little bit harder on my eyes when using After Effects for a while, so I'm gonna keep that checked. But that's the new theme and color theme update to After Effects, which I think is great, but probably the least exciting of these new updates. The next one that I wanna talk about is specific for Windows, but if I jump back to this 2024 version of After Effects and just move some panels around. You see how laggy that is, how choppy this is? You know, I'm using the launch into After Effects title graphic. This is the course you can go check out on my website, jakeinmotion.com. Shameless plug, but if I press you to bring up all of the keyframes and I try to select all of them, you see that it's just a little laggy. It's not very responsive. And if you have, you know, a hundred layers and they all have keyframes, it can actually be a task just to select all of those keyframes. And now that I have them selected, let's say I wanna move them around. Look at how laggy this is, how slow it is to move stuff around. Part of that, yes, is because we're updating in the composition right here. But if I press caps lock to disable that, then you're gonna see see that it's still just super laggy. It's not something that's fun to deal with at all on Windows. And it's a struggle that all Windows users have had to just deal with for years now. But if we go back to the beta version of After Effects, and again, try and resize a panel. Look at how buttery smooth this is. It's now GPU accelerated on Windows so that the interface just responds so much more quickly. If I bring up those keyframes with you, make a selection, look how quick that was. I can move these around and it's instant. There's basically no latency at all when dragging these keyframes around. And that is something that I just am so excited about. I'm so glad to see that as a new feature. Another new feature has to do with the way that you can copy and paste keyframes. If we jump back to the other version of After Effects and I reveal these keyframes again, let's say that I wanna duplicate all these keyframes across all of these layers. Well, if I copy and paste, you know what's gonna happen. It's gonna paste duplicates of all the layers. It's not gonna copy and paste the keyframes. Now, this is actually a feature, if we jump back to the beta version, that was introduced back in December. I just haven't covered it yet, and there's a new update to it. But with all these keyframes selected, if I copy and paste, it's going to paste the keyframes across the layers, not duplicate the layers, which is awesome. But if I undo and go up to the edit menu, there's now a paste reversed keyframes option. If I paste there, then it's going to mirror all of those keyframes across time. So this is gonna be a really quick and easy way built into After Effects to be able to reverse your animation. Maybe you have text coming in and then you want it to go out. That's exactly what this is gonna enable you to do. And because it's built into After Effects menu, if I go up to the keyboard shortcuts, I can assign it to a keyboard shortcut. Cut. So I'll search for reversed keyframes. There we go, paste reversed keyframes and you know, control V is paste. So why don't we say control shift V and C. That's set to hide other layers video. I don't think I've ever used that function. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that the keyboard shortcut. Control shift V, click okay. And now we can just do that. Control shift V and it's gonna paste reversed keyframes. I think that's a huge quality of life improvement to After Effects and something I'm really excited about. Let me know down in the comments what you think of these new features. I, this is obviously a beta version of After Effects. There might be bugs. If you're on a Windows machine and maybe your GPU isn't cooperating with the new user interface refresh, let the devs know. Tell them which GPU you're on, what version of Windows, all that good stuff so that they can diagnose the issue and get it ready for the public release. I am really excited about these new features, but let me know down in the comments what you wanna see changed about After Effects next. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you wanna see more feature updates like this one. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, hey.
Bob Sutton. 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 Bob